Guys, welcome to the J. Scott Outdoors podcast. I want to thank you for all of the support that you've given me here. If you have any questions of me, you can send me a DM on my Instagram account at J. Scott Outdoors or send me an email jscottoutdoors at gmail.com. I want to thank you guys for listening to this podcast. Um, please tell your friends about it, and I appreciate your support. I also want to thank the sponsors of this podcast. I want to thank GoHunt.com, Cody Nelson, the glassing guru. He's been on the podcast a bunch. Guys, if you need any optical uh, needs at all, anything glassing-related, tripod-related, uh, any optical questions, or if you need gear, give Cody a call at 702 847 8747. You can also text or call him on his cell phone 602-399-3699. Um, guys, use the J. Scott promo code when you're signing up for the Go Hunt Insider. That's going to give you uh, discounts. Um, right now, they're running a $50 Go Hunt Gear Shop gift card if you sign up using the J. Scott promo code. I also want to thank Kuyu Ultralight Hunting. Kuyu is a direct consumer brand, K-U-I-U dot com. Uh, the ultra, ultralight hunting gear is the gear that I have worn since uh, and used since 2010. Um, they are a direct to consumer brand. You can go to kuyu.com, order everything right there directly on the website. Also want to point out for those of you that are near the Dallas, Texas area, they have just opened a retail location. So now they have a retail location in Dallas as well as in Dixon, California. Um, also be looking out for the Kuyu guys um, at some of the trade shows that are coming up here in the next couple months. Thank you to Kuyu for their uh, longtime support. I also want to thank Phonescope.com. Remind you guys to use the JScott23 promo code. That's going to get you 10% off on all orders at Phonescope. And then last but not least, LathropAndSons.com. Uh, contact owner Stephen and James at LathropAndSons, 618-544-8782. Uh, they make mountain hunting boots. They have the Encompass the Mountain Hunter, and the Elite Boot. Um, again, reach out at 618-544-8782. Um, also ask them about their custom Synergy footbeds. Um, you can also check them out at lathropandsons.com. Guys, let's get right to this episode. Again, we're, we're approaching the new year of 2024. I appreciate all your support. Reach out. Love to hear from you. Guys, welcome to the J. Scott Outdoors podcast. Today, I've got my friend Brendan Burns of Kuyu, the Chief Hunting Officer and Conservation Director of Kuyu. Brendan, how are you doing? Doing great, man. How are you doing? Good. It's been a while since I've talked to you, and I'm excited to get you on the podcast to kind of catch up and see how Brendan's doing, see how Kuyu's doing, and just have an overall chat. So I'm looking forward to it. Yeah, it's been a while. So yeah, I've been busy, busy. So that's, that's how it goes. Awesome. Well, um, let's start out. Um, since we've last talked, um, you've done a bunch of personal hunts. I know you've been elk hunting and doll sheep hunting. You fulfilled your grand slam, uh, big old brown bear, um, elk. I believe Lucas was there with you, um, and doll sheep in Alaska. Um, tell us about some of your recent hunts. Yeah, it's been, uh, yeah, I, I can't remember exactly what we talked about, but yeah, a year and a half ago, I was able to finish up my uh, my archery grand slam, my second grand slam in, in Mexico, which was cool. And on Carmen Island, that was a that was a just a long time coming, and cool to to finish that out. And then uh, I, I think we launched the brown bear film. Probably we haven't talked since then, and was able to take a, a second Boone and Crockett brown bear with a bow. And you can you can watch that on Kuyu dot com um, on our on our YouTube site, which is pretty, which was you know. Those kind of things are not, it's not something you, 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 it's just a dream come true. And, you know, sometimes everything goes right. And, and it's pretty rare that two times it goes right. So that was, that was uh, just, you know, just a phenomenal hunt. And then, uh, yeah, all comes in good, man. I, I, uh, um, I, yeah, again, I don't even know when we talked, but I, I killed a great big bull a year ago. And then this, this fall, um, shot a, a really giant bull. And it was pretty cool the first time I had, uh, my son Lucas with me and spent 11 days chasing one bull and he had a weekend off. So I went and got him and he came out with me and we just got, got into him and, uh, yeah, smashed a great big, you know, high seventies, super heavy, 
bowl with a crown point with uh, Lucas over my shoulder at 50 yards and he walked 20 yards and fell over dead. So pretty, uh, pretty awesome. And he was able to get his first really nice mule deer this fall. And yeah, man, just been, just been good. And I, I, had, I had a doll sheep this fall too in Alaska. And so I killed a, uh, a 41 inch ram in Alaska and a really, really tough hunt. You know, I mean, a lot of people know Alaska's, Alaska's pretty tough right now. And uh, yeah, day, day 10 of a, or day 11 of a nine day or a 10 day hunt and kill a, kill a great big ram that um, just the only legal ram I saw in, in, on the whole hunt. So it was uh, put a lot of miles on and those are, those are the good ones when they end up like that. So yeah, overall been, been a lot of, a lot of good, a lot of, a lot of, a lot of good luck. That's for sure. So that's awesome. I want to bounce back to that brown bear hunt. So you, you've actually killed two big brown bears with your bow. Is that correct? Yep, two two Boone and Crockett bears with a bow. Yep. And the the latest video that I watched, um, if I remember right, you were literally there for thirteen or fourteen days, and I think you shot the bear. You spotted it on the last day and made a play on it. And tell us a little bit about the details of that hunt and kind of the struggles. You were with Lance, I believe, and yep. um, I believe Matt Forsythe was there filming. Yep. with you um how much of a grind was that and like what you know what goes through your mind when you know you're just grinding and grinding and grinding literally some days probably with hardly anything to to report yeah it was uh um that's one of those things where i i have a hard time even saying grind when you're able to do something that's that's such a um such a limited opportunity that a lot, not a lot of people get to do. I mean, like, like you I, look at it as a privilege. You don't look at it yeah, as a totally. grind. Like I'm lucky to get to do this is how you, that's how your brain works. Right. Yeah, for sure. I mean, like, I mean, it, it can be a physical grind and you're working very, very hard, but you're lucky um, to be able to do that. So that's how I look at everything, especially with those really, you know, those opportunities that not a lot of people get. And uh, yeah, it was the 15th day of a 15 day season with about three hours to go and we spotted this giant we had we had seen one early in the like we just it just didn't work out early and then we had a long stretch where it was pretty slow and then you know it, it, i look at it like every single day is a new day every i mean you can see one of those giants at any given time you got as good a chance to kill one on the last day as you do on the first day um and you just got to be there when it happens and it's just maintaining a high level of focus and glass and hard and um, and you know, I was just enjoying it. I mean, like, I mean, you, you never know how many times you're gonna, you're gonna get to do that kind of stuff. So yeah, it was just a, it was just a long hunt and we saw a lot of bears, but not a lot of big bears. And I killed a, the number six brown bear taken with a bow in 2018. And so I'm pretty picky too. It wasn't like we didn't see bears that I could go after. Um, I'm just looking for a giant. I, I just, you know, I, it, it, the thing about score that people always get kind of mixed up is like it's like a competition or something like that it's really not i mean like the you know i, I killed a bear that was number six all time and then you know looking through the records and i'm like i'm like you know what nobody's ever killed two 28 inch bears with a bow and you know not that it's like some crazy accomplishment or something but i don't know how many guys have ever tried but i'm like i'm gonna try to be the first one to ever do it and uh that means I'm going to have to pass some bears up and try and kill a, an absolute another monster and, and and giant bears. Like I didn't know this bear had a 28 inch skull. We thought it was a. I mean, we knew it was a monster, and you go after him, but it's not like you're like, oh, I'm pretty sure it's a, you know. You go after a great big bear and you hope that he has a big skull. That's the honest God truth. Right. You see a mass a massive body and you're like, that's a big bear. And it's the fifteenth day, and that's a big one. How big it is, it's hard to say, but it's big. Yeah, the the, the last day thing didn't factor in at all. I'm like, I'm going to go back if if I don't get one, and and I would way rather you know you can only kill one every four years, so I would far rather um, not. I would rather go having killed one, you know, a, a, a absolute monster that uh, back in eighteen. Like I would rather go home without a bear than kill one. That's not what I'm. What's going to make me super pumped about so i'd rather leave it out one than than kill a smaller one so but, but when Brennan, you see Brennan, one of those not giants, to interrupt you but this is a super good point that i you just said doesn't that same mentality shouldn't that apply to other trophy animals and if people were trying to kill big stuff and they took this attitude on most hunts that they're willing to go home without one and they saw bucks 
bulls, bears, rams, whatever it may be, that didn't fit what they wanted, that what their heart was after, wouldn't they probably end up shooting bigger animals because they've got the mindset of I'm willing to go home without one. Like I get asked on my Instagram all the time, like, how do you become a trophy hunter? It's like, you don't become a trophy hunter. You have a mental mindset of I'm going to do this and I'm not going to settle for anything else. Right. I mean, at some point you have to make a decision on what you're trying to do. And it sounds like on this bear, you're like, I can only kill one every four years. I don't want to just kill a little one. I've already killed a giant. I want to kill another giant. Yeah, it all depends on where. I mean, if you're just trying to get one and it's your first time ever and it's a lot of money, that's different. I totally understand taking one. But like once you've done it, right. And that's how I've been with elk for a long time is like, I, it gives me way more anxiety to have my tag punched on something that I'm not going to be happy with than to say, oh, I got one. I right. mean, like I would way rather eat my tag than kill something I'm not going to be happy with. And that's just me personally, like, especially once you've, you know, killed a giant. That's the same thing with this bear. But, you know, yeah, I mean, it's, it, it's, it's once you've taken some or have experienced that kind of stuff, it's like you're looking for a great big one. Um, you just got, ultimately, you just got to give it time. I mean, I'm going to run into another great big one. It's like, can you wait long enough and can you have a tag in your pocket when that opportunity presents itself? It's not that, it's not that hard. It's just if you want to kill it, you know, with anything, you want to kill a 200 inch mule deer, every time you pull the trigger on a, on a pencil horn 160, that's one, that's an opportunity that you're not going to get to kill. Right. To be out if you still have time body. left on your hunt and you pull that trigger on a 160, you've just defeated your goal and purpose of trying to kill a 200. So what you're saying is like, it comes down to, you have to be willing to put in the time, but you have to let the time play out in your favor. And if it, if the clock stops and you don't get one, you know that you you were in the pursuit of killing a 200 and the clock ran out and you ran out of time. But all of a sudden you've been on so many hunts where I've heard the story of like the last day or the second to the last day or literally packing up camp and like happen to look at like you let the clock run out and hope that you can find what you're looking for in that time period. You don't just say, oh, I'm just going to, just going to, I've shot eight of them already and i'm just going to go ahead and bag one so i can take a picture with it and show my friends and be like look how good i am no i think it really boils down to like giving it enough time and and what you're going to be happy with and you know it's a progression i mean i I wasn't that way when i you know i would have killed any of my first one and and same with the you know um when it comes to you know some stuff it's like man it's a uh, opportunity you're not ever going to see again you want to get one well, i totally understand that but on on some of this stuff in particular like it was this bear like i'm gonna go back and you can't like my goal doesn't change on day 15 from it did from day one of the hunt when you're super excited it just it's just not going to change having taken a big one like i don't i don't need another one you know it's a eight thousand dollar kick in the kneecap uh when you get home anyways with the with getting the thing mounted so yeah. um yeah so it's it, like i said or just you got to give it enough time and we in a move into a new area with that big brown bear and and you know boom there he was and it was a perfect situation we were literally packing up to leave big hike back and he came off the off the ocean with it with a ch- moving a uh breeding a sow and it was you know, then, then, and, and you don't have to look at those giant bears very long. I mean, people are always like, well, how do you know? I mean, we looked at 50 bears over the course of 15 days and three of them, when you see them, you just go, oh yeah, that's, yeah, they're, they're like a seven a foot person. Like, <laughs> you don't have to look very long. Like right. it's now whether they have a giant skull or not, that's, you know, that's where some of the luck lies. And uh, yeah, anyways, made a big move on them and um it was just about to go south and 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 lance started blowing a predator call and got i got in fairly close to the bear 55 yards and he stood up on his hind legs and nuked him in the heart and you know it's one of those things where it looks easy once it's done and it seems like oh it always works out and but you know it's just yeah it was pretty pretty cool and you know like i don't have lots of I, it's hard to say a hunt of a lifetime on just about anything but that's that's a top 10 for sure it was pretty pretty wild so um what is it about hunting brown bears with a bow that for you is is almost like the pinnacle of, of what you hunt and other guys that I know that have done it, they, they really get into it. You know, they, 
they go from like loving to you know hunt bugling big bulls type of thing and then as soon as they go brown bear hunting like it it seems like they all are brown bear junkies and what is it about it is it just the adrenaline of the size of the animal knowing that it can eat you or what is it yeah no it's uh, like for me it's just it's one of those things i read about as a kid i mean like elk sheep and big bears are where my passion lies and everybody's got their things that they love but elk sheep and big bears that's what that's what i love and and you know, it was, you know, seeing Chuck Adams super slam posters and, and watching Fred bear, like, it's just something that seemed unachievable when I was a little kid. It was just like, man, that is just, that's, that's when you get to the real deal, that's what you get to do. And so to be able to do that, um, is it's just, and, and it's not the danger thing. In fact, there's far less danger than people think. Like I see some of these other films where guys are making a big deal about almost getting eaten and all this stuff and all that stuff's almost all BS. I mean, it's actually very controlled and it's really about um, putting yourself in the right situation to make a really good shot and, and make, you know, try not to make any errors. And it's, it's actually very controlled. It was just, um, I think the drama gets brought in by um, trying to make a story out of stuff, which, you know, if you do it right, you don't need to make a story about it. But as far as like, I've never felt like, you know, I don't think anybody's been closer to a 10 foot bear than four yards um, after they shot them, like my first one or, I, I don't look at the danger thing. I look like that's why you practice and that's why you go with a really good outfitter and somebody that you trust and, and is, is the, it's very, very controlled. It's like the opposite of I'm going to go out there and, you know, I'm going to get eaten and like, I, I don't buy any of that and I've done it more than anybody. So um, I, I just, I just think they're such, I, I will tell you this, they are such an impressive animal. It's shocking how big they are. I mean, it's really one of those that you, the photos look giant you see them, you're just like, man, that paw's bigger than your chest. You know, they're they're just massive, like bigger than a horse. But it's just one of those things when you see one in person, you go like, oh my god. I mean, they're just one of the last true living monsters on the planet. I mean, the the bear when when, when this one when he walked off the beach, uh, he probably had a seven foot sow with her with him. And I mean, this thing came off the beach, and it was like I actually said to Lance, I said, if that thing had crocodile skin, we'd be running from it. Like they're a monster. <laughs> Like if that thing was exactly like a brown bear, but it had lizard skin, it it, it would be the most terrifying thing you'd ever seen in, on the planet. Like they're <laughs> they're just crazy. So I just I just love that, and and it's just where they're from. You know, it's such a remote area. The weather is so terrible, and and it's just like you can't fake it. You can't fake going and hunting and killing a giant brown bear. There's nowhere you can be like odds are better this and that like you got to go be there and you know it's just one of those things like nobody accidentally kills a mega giant they just they just don't and you're definitely not going to accidentally end up killing a world-class bear with your bow so those are the type of hunts that appeal to me the most that you just there's there's no there's no cheat code there's nothing you just got to go do it which is which is what's awesome about it and it's it's probably that i i've been telling people you know as, as the price of sheep has gone up and these big trips, which, you know, not everybody can do, but I feel like brown bear is probably the most undervalued hunt in North America now for what you get, what you get to see, the adventure of it, the animal itself. Like, they're still not, you know, I mean, doll sheep are getting out of hand and stone sheep are off over the moon and big mule deer are crazy expensive. I, th I feel like brown bear is uh, it's, it's a tremendous hunt if you only get to do it once. Let's bounce back to your Grand Slam um, completion. Uh, I believe that's your second Grand Slam. Am I correct? Yeah. Ar um, archery Slam, this one was, but the first one was the rifle, yep. Gotcha. Um, so you have completed a rifle slam and an archery slam. W having yep. said that, d does, does the passion for sheep hunting wane at all compared to how hard it burned in your belly before that? I mean, is there any let up? at all like maybe you will shift focus to something else or you have your eyes on it you know getting your, your third slam yeah I, no i don't have any i mean like i've been so blessed and i've had more opportunities than i ever thought i possibly could have like um it i love sheep country i love going on sheep hunts um do i need to shoot i, I was really motivated to kill really big dolls and I, i've got a couple of them now and um you know giant big horn and you know stone sheep are so expensive but I, I i i love hunting sheep country and i'll continue to hunt sheep country probably with other people and um but you know i've taken enough rams i'm, I'm not saying i'm not gonna i'm not gonna sheep hunt coming up this summer in the yukon 
but um, it definitely wanes as far as I guess my my love of sheep country and bumping into a really a real monster is is probably more of a drive than 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 just getting one you know like i mean i, I don't mind walking away from a sheep hunt without getting one um i've been pretty lucky um but you know, I, I i i obviously my son's getting older he's gonna he's gonna hopefully we'll have some opportunities for him uh down the road and I, I got some buddies that are going on hunts that i've already you know said i'm going as a packer or just to go along and um yeah, it's just an opportunity that's so limited. So I've, I've just I've had a lot of great opportunities, and the 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 de- the, the desert with the bow was uh, one of those that you know to finish off a grand slam with a bow. It's just you know there's only eight. I'm number eighty three. That you know there's less than a hundred people have ever done it. That's that's something that's pretty cool. And and um, but it was yeah, it was a very very cool hunt. And yeah, they're they're uh, yeah, just been a, been a good run on the sheep. There's no doubt about that. All right, let me talk about um, hunting with Lucas. And you said, I, I know he's. you've had him on some whitetail hunts. You've had him on some deer hunts in Montana. Um, and then he went and ran around with you chasing, and he got to watch you shoot this b- big bull elk. First of all, how old is Lucas? And I want to ask you some questions about um, just being a father and, and talking about hunting with family. Lucas. Yeah, Lucas is 11 and he's been uh he's been hunting with me and going like and I I've had a lot of people like he's he's really really into it and and I've like, had a lot like of how so like, like like when you're at home he's watching videos he's asking you questions he's out shooting his bow like when you say yeah, into all, it all like, of the above and this morning when I walked into his room he was reading uh one of the new Boone and Crockett books and was wondering why this one elk was in there was a non-typical that had three brow tines on both sides and not um, a typical, like he's into it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. He's, he's super into it. And you know, it's, it's just been, I guess, watching me and then, and then, you know, taking him along and I've, I've kind of got this 50% rule with him. He wants to go on everything and I only take him about half the time. Um, I don't let him go on everything cause I don't want to burn him out. And I try not to take him on stuff that's going to, really whip him physically and be not fun like we've really concentrated on fun and i you know before he was old enough to hunt here in montana i took him down to texas and texas is a great place like shooting javelinas and, and management deer and all that stuff and i have a friend that has a ranch down there that's let him come down and shoot some nice bucks and it was you know just i think it's the key is he's had some really good success and been with us when we you know went recovered i mean i, I took him on his first elk recovery after i killed a bull and 2015 i guess he would have been three and a half years old and he hiked in a quarter mile and he got the elk out it was pretty cool so i think it's just it's it and some kids have it some kids don't um i don't know and i'm blessed that he he loves to do what i love to do so it's yeah it's it's awesome and, and he's he's 90 pounds now and gets around really good he's tough and uh so like yeah this fall i went back and got him you know a four-day weekend and, and i've been on this bull for 11 days and he uh honestly he's he's a really good hunter and i'm sure everybody says that about their kid but he's super quiet he's very so would you say just stay right behind me when i stop you stop when just don't move did you just i mean yeah yeah he just stays behind me and um he's got a little cow call that he does really well he's got a little soft cow call um i was just like just 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 listen to me and i got a little set of stocking shoes for him we wear these little soft shoes so it's it's nice and quiet but he he's you know, growing up stocking rabbits in the yard and, you know, hunting all over. So he, he, he's, he, he gets it. And, uh, yeah, I mean, it was, and we just got lucky. I'd, I'd seen this bull the day before and, and he was in a place I couldn't hunt him. And then he, I, I knew he was somewhere around and we did a huge loop. And like I said, it was, you know, I think we were about seven miles in when we found him. And, uh, yeah, the bull was just had a big herd of cows that he had just kind of isolated off and kicked everybody else's butt. And he just kind of kept started working towards us and Lucas and I just got in front of him. Wind was good. And it was kind of like a cutting horse. We'd go a little bit left, a little bit right, a little bit left, a little bit right until we, you know, they're coming towards us. And we just got it where they're going to pop up here in a hundred yards somewhere. And uh, I was actually looking one way and Lucas is like, they're right here, so, which is pretty cool. And we had a herd of 40 cows and this big bull came right up to us and they weren't, you know, we were, we were over this little ledge and, and uh, yeah, he was right there and, bull came around and checked the cows and disappeared and came around the other side right in front of us and 
raised him at 50 and hard shot him and he walked 20 yards and fell over dead and you none know, of the cows knew what was going on it was pretty 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 awesome especially to have him right there with me so it's cool yeah. as far as i i want to know on on your meter of you know like the the most cherished moment like all the big stuff you've killed was that one of the best moments of your hunting career to have him there to kind of see the highs and lows and then be able to kill that bull right in front of him like was that probably one of the best experiences you've had with him oh for sure yeah it was it was awesome and did just, he and realize the, the moment did like did did he realize oh, yeah. like you did like what it was or was oh you yeah think, okay yeah yeah no it was cool and 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 just yeah it's just it's just a transition of like and especially you, like he saw like we we got into some bulls early it's like nope not that one it's like and just kind of see how i do it and and that like you know, he wants your kid to go like, oh, hey, dad's he, all the stuff he's talking about and that he's telling me like uh, that that really works. The old works, man's the real know? deal. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I was like, yep, we're not going after that one. We're not going after that one. And and uh, yeah, it was it was it was really cool. And and uh, yeah, I mean, and and you know, everybody that has. I remember when I was I, I hunted with Randy Ulmer in two thousand four on a, at the same place we hunted, and he was telling me about hunting with his kids back then and like and i did you know it's like you always think you get it and i didn't get it you know it's like you don't have kids at the time you don't really know how cool that is and um hunting with friends is not the exact same as you know because it's it's passing on a legacy it's something you know the greatest gift you could give a kid is 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 a lifetime hobby that they're going to do their entire life like my you know like my dad passed on to me you know so it's like yeah, it's just a, it's just a super cool thing, and and uh, yeah, like I said, we're well, I'm looking forward to how it's going to w- progress for him. And what is he eyeballing as far as like, Dad? I really want to go X Y Z. What is what is like? What does he? What is his like most oh, focused oh, animal oh, that he wants oh, to go? A lot of stuff we're not going to do right off the bat. <laughs> I'm sure. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean. Hi, Altar Agali, and and uh, yeah, no, but um, he really wants to get a caribou, which we're gonna make happen, and and uh, you know, um, elk elk next year, you know, like he'll be twelve next year. That'll be that'll be pretty cool. And, and so he's uh, legal uh, in Montana to hunt elk. Be legal, yeah. You can hunt deer when you're ten in Montana, so he's killed two really nice bucks, and then next year he'll be able to hunt elk, which is which is pretty cool. So with a bow we'll, or and, rifle, yeah, with a bow. Yeah, wow. with a bow or a rifle, but uh, we'll we'll bow hunt, and and I've I've kind of got it planned out for him where you know we're not going to be super picky. Like I want to have success. I'm not uh, like the, I don't want to start somewhere, that. right? Yeah, and I don't want it to get to where you know because a lot of times what I'm doing is not quite as fun as it used to be. You know, when you're letting three fifty bulls walk, and I can see some videos. I'm not just saying that. I mean, when you let big bulls that you you know back in the day you do backflips over walk because you're looking for something bigger. It, you know, success is harder to come by and it's, it's frustrating. Um, and I don't want him to be that early, you know, that's great. If that works into that and he, you know, smashes way more big bulls than I ever have. That's awesome. But right off the bat, I want a uh, man, we want to go, you know, some big fat raghorn stands in front of us at 20 yards. He's getting, he's get, getting, a, getting an arrow. So that's, that's, that, it would be fun to. Well, it's, it's interesting you say that because like, there's a lot of, I'm trying to, correlate a little bit of an analogy here but there's a lot of world-class golfers that have been at the highest level of golf and played professional you know for years and won major championships and and whatnot and very few of their kids actually turn around and play competitive golf and i think some of it is they've seen their fathers at such a high level I think it's very important that you say, hey, we're going to go. And if we see a, you know, five point legal bull and, and he gives us a shot, we're, you know. So, in other words, you're trying not to put pressure on him to su- uh, succeed to your standards starting off. You're, you're trying to teach him that you got to start somewhere and you got to, you know, get some experience. And then, and then if ultimately the, I would assume one of the, your biggest joys, if ultimately you'll be gone someday, and when he's telling his kids, you would love it if he surpasses you, becomes a better hunter, shoots bigger animals than you. But that's not that's not ultimately as a father. That's not what you're pushing for. What you're pushing for is trying to give him opportunities to enjoy what you both enjoy together, right? 
Yeah, I want to have a good time. Right. I, I want to have a good time with him, and I want to see, you know, I, I think it's important with kids to have success. And I, I think a lot of people get get it wrong in the fact that right off the bat, they're like, oh, man, it's giant or nothing. It's like, man, I, I, I think back to the early 90s when I was trying to kill my first elk with a bow, and, man, the first two – my, my first six point I ever kill, like, I, I don't know that I've ever replicated that much joy um, or just, and maybe it's just because it was shock that I couldn't believe that something would get in front of me or whatever. But yeah, <laughs> Stand you don't want to skip enough. that. You don't want to skip that, that point. I mean, like even next year, like if it's a spike or whatever, I don't, I don't care. I want, I want him to, I want him to see the progression because his skill set is not going to be, and, and, you know, like killing great big stuff a lot of times is not in your control. I want him to become a good hunter and control what he can control. So we're going to go hunt elk where they're elk and, you know, and, and become – I want him to become a good elk hunter. I don't want him to uh, have a spot that he goes or to – like I want him to learn how to hunt elk. I don't, I don't care what the results are right off the bat. Um, I want him to learn how to hunt elk and then ultimately that will lead to whatever his journey is. I mean, he may want to fill the freezer. It doesn't matter to me, but ultimately I want him to become a good elk hunter more so than kill elk. Yeah. Makes sense. Um, Brendan, I want to shift gears here. Um, Kuyu has developed a whitetail line, a waterfowl line and has come out with a, a, a wide variety of, of women's, um, products and from the outside looking in, all three have been a major success. Um, can you kind of dive into each one and talk about not only the success they've had with the, with the line uh, or lines, um, but kind of some of the behind the scenes of what you guys were trying to do to fill those needs? Yeah, we, we go about um, adding new stuff in in kind of a different way than anybody else does. I mean, we we look at everything and not like, oh, hey, there's a new market we can go into. We, we look at it like, can we make this stuff better? You know, can we, with with better fabric and design and being well more well thought out, like, can we make stuff better where, um, you know, the women's line was was uh, was one of the, a really cool thing that we introduced. And it was basically a, a, a sizing exercise. You know, we have some really serious um, women that, that were like, yeah, man, all the stuff is great. It just, if it could just fit better. And they, we went into, um, you know, I wasn't obviously heavily involved in that cause I'm not a woman, <laughs> right. but, um, you know, we look at, you know, Glenda Grode and, um, and Stephanie Lowe and, and Shan, uh, Tompkins, like real, real women that were using it in the field a lot. We're like, oh, this could be improved. And so, um, very similar to the, to the men's stuff, just with a better fit. And it's been well received. Um, it's been great. Um, and it was, uh, it was a, a cool thing for us to do and, and has been, uh, it's been very successful and on the, on the, on the waterfowl line and the whitetail line. We just attack those as, as really getting to the, to the core of what, where we, we thought we could improve. It wasn't like, Hey, we need a me too product. We need to get in that as well. Cause we, we took a long time to develop and, you know, especially with, uh, you know, I don't, I don't think a lot of people realize that the, uh, the, the, the waterfowl side of it is pretty interesting because some of the best duck hunting in the world is within 30 minutes of, of the headquarters there. And so those guys are, they're really into it. And, um, so you think the fun. waterfowl development was easy transition for them because they all are waterfowl hunters. Yeah. And, and our, and, and really, you know, when you talk about from the beginning, it's always been about better fabrics and better design and more well thought out. And it's a lot of, it's a similar technology. It's just, you know, applying it to, uh, practical uses in those, in, in, in those hunts. And, and so, yeah, the waterfowl thing and, um, just, just making it to where, what, what people want to, to go hunt waterfowl and, and what's, you know, uh, you know, you don't need it quite as light, more warm, you know, the way we did a, a really cool co-brand, um, waiter program with Sims, which is obviously one of the leaders in, in waiter technology in, in the world. And that was, that was a really cool, um, uh, to, to partner up with them. And yeah, it's been very successful. Um, just been almost everything we've introduced has, has went really well. The, the whitetail side, we approached from a different, um, way. And it's not, I, I don't even really call it whitetail stuff, but it, it, what we approached is how can we make it quieter and how can we keep you warm? 
you know, cold and quiet was the kind of initiative, not, hey, we need whitetail stuff. It's been cold and quiet. Like, how do we make this stuff uh, for a different application that's going to be nearly silent and is going to keep you warm in when you're not high exertion hunting, when you're more stagnant? And that was how we went about it. And again, it's just better fabrics, better design, better insulation mapped out, more well thought out, and just really listening to the guy. Like, I would say nobody. I mean, I've hunted whitetails my entire life, but would I consider myself an absolute expert like some of the people we brought in to pick their brain on? No. Um, just listen to the little things that, you know, a lot of stuff is about 90% there. It's, it's hard to get it all the way there. So just listening to the guys that um, are using it every day and the stuff that they want and, and need. And it's been a long, long testing process. It's been a, in the works for a long, long time, um, year. I can't even tell you what year we started it. Um, but it's, it's went over really well. And, and, you know, ultimately we want to, we want to fill out everything that any hunter is going to do. I mean, obviously there, our passion is, is the mountain hunting and, and, and the stuff that we started with, but, um, there's a lot of hunting that goes on in between sheep hunts and elk tags and, um, going out West. And we also want to make sure that you're, you're not using inferior gear for that stuff when you're, uh, when you're doing stuff that's more local or or whatever your other passion lies. So it's been super well received and um, it's got a really cool bag welded program that has been some, you know, some really cool new technology. Those are waterproof stuff. And yeah, it's just been, it's a lot of fun to, to drive into new areas. And, and we got an awesome team there that, you know, has been a little bit divided up now and, and several members are in this specialized in the waterfowl and that's in the cold and quiet side and the gear side and the mountain hunting side. So it's, a, it's been a big growth at the company too, which is, which is pretty awesome to, uh, to, to see. Speaking of growth of the company, you guys have also opened up a retail store or retail location um, in Dallas, Texas. Tell us a little yep. bit about um, the first retail location for Kuyu. Well, it's our second location. We've got, we've always had one in Dixon, which is a crazy successful store. At the and headquarters, right? At the headquarters, yeah, it's it's not a not a big one, but we, uh, yeah, we we put our first uh, flagship retail store in, in in Dallas, and we have a pile of customers. I mean, it's no it's no surprise Texas is. I mean, you think about a mountain hunting company, you know, why Texas? Like we have a massive amount of customers there. It's a a lot of travel goes through there. It's just it just you know the data show that's a really great location, and and we have a lot of customers in Texas, and it's been a it was just a it's just a good fit for um for a store and and uh yeah it's been phenomenal yeah it's it's, it's uh it's been going amazing We've got some some great people down there and if anybody's in dallas uh just google it and go check it out and we, they, they put a lot of time and energy into it it's a it's a pretty awesome experience and ultimately the the retail experiences for us are you can't always put your hand on it you know like i mean the, the one negative to consumer direct and and just i guess to clarify like this is our store this is not a retail you know we don't send it to somebody else this is like we control every aspect of the experience and to go in and see the kuyu experience in full and and to be able to put your hands on it and sizing and and really interact with somebody that knows what they're talking about as far as the product wise has always been one of the goals um and it's just been it's it's cool to see it come to fruition and, and it's just it's a it's a really awesome store and and, and the experience there is uh, is pretty cool so anybody in the dallas area i would definitely go check it out I mean, up until now, uh, customers, if they wanted to touch it, feel it, you know, put their hands on it, they had to go to some of the trade shows that Kuyu yep. is at or had to go to Dixon, California. Now you add the middle of the country, you know, Dallas, Texas. Um, I'm betting that that store is probably reporting that you're getting people not only from Texas, but other states that are driving over, you know, a couple hours from Oklahoma driving from, over flying over right. it's, it's pretty amazing yeah the, the crew that was down there during uh during the month of November um we we have a lot of different people coming in to work the store which is pretty unique in the fact that uh some of our guys that are that are uh part of the trade show circuit and 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 people that are just really close to the brand that don't necessarily work ever at Kuyu will come down and work for a week or two in the or a couple days or whatever in the in the store in Dallas and yeah there was lots of people traveling a long ways to see it and, and, it, and like i said it's not just a, some pop-up store or something like a lot of work went into it it's a it's a real it's a real hands-on kuyu experience um which is 
really always been the goal. Like we've always wanted to control the sales experience and, and, and not only deliver a superior product, but deliver a superior interaction and, and knowledge to, you know, to the customer. It's a, it's a, we, we just wanted to take it to a, on, on a, on a higher level of customer service for sure. Um, so it's cool to, to go in there and they, they really have a, a, a lot of knowledge and they got every one of the products in there and sizing and, and, and you know, you can, you can, you can walk out the door with everything that's there or you can have it shipped to your house. So it's pretty, it's pretty cool. Fantastic. Um, while we're talking about that, do you happen to know off the top of your head, which trade shows, um, the guys from Kuyu will be at as far as um, if people are listening and want to know if they're going to be at a certain show, if, the, if you know, pretty much at those shows, the full line of Kuyu gear is there yep. or you can go and touch it and put your hands on it. Um, do you know what shows coming up uh, you guys will be at? Yeah, we will be at Dallas Fire Club, Wild Sheep, um, the Western Hunting Expo, Safari Club International, the Great American Outdoor Show, I believe it's still called that. Um, the, the one, one in Harrisburg. Uh, yep, yeah, that one. And then, the, um, boy, don't hold me on it. I think we do the NRA show too, but I okay. let me check. I, but th- those those ones for sure we're at right now. And then um, we'll have a presence at some of the smaller sheep shows, um, state shows, uh, Montana, and a couple other ones. Will, but um, we will have a full show schedule posted at kuyu.com. Um, um, if it's not up there right now, it'll be up there shortly. So, but the, the, the main four or the main five are those ones is Dallas Safari Club, SCI, Western Conservation Expo and Wild Sheep and, and the Harrisburg one. Okay. Yeah. I wanted to touch, uh, particularly on a couple of products. One of which, um, I've been wearing, I just wore on that desert sheep hunt in Mexico was the pro brush pant. Um, wanted to know if you've had, um, much uh success wearing that um yourself and i have to say from you know someone that's you know running around in arizona and the you know harsh conditions as far as vegetation slapping up against your legs and whatnot i was impressed with the brush pant um what have been what has been your take on that piece of gear yeah i've worn it all over it's one of my uh, it's one of the new things we've added in that i really love and it, it it's uh, obviously designed to be uh, resistant and heavy duty, um, um, you know, high, high level of durability. Resistant. Yeah, abrasion resistant durability, but it doesn't wear like it's as heavy as it is. And that yeah. may not make a lot of sense, but it... It um, feels light on when you're wearing it. I yeah. mean, it's a step it's up from the Kutana, but it, but it yeah. still feels light like the Kutana pant. Yeah, yeah, it wears lighter than it is. Um, and yeah, I wore it on Kodiak a year ago. Um, quite a bit just when we were originally testing out and launched it and uh, i was very surprised i mean not surprised but i was i was i really like it and it fits in my in my kind of overall you know how many pants can you have that you actually need to wear well that that one definitely slid into where i I wear it quite a bit um i like the hook the boot hook on it i like the way yeah it's just got a slick feel to it for us the 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 weight of the fabric um and it's actually super super water resistant too so great great product they did a killer job on that and um you know we just get a lot of requests for stuff that you know as, as you develop the line as far as the pants you know from attack and tiburon and katana and guide and axis and then all of a sudden you know you, you, a lot of times it's customer feedback it's like have you thought you know i could use this right here that this is close but it's not quite and that's kind of where the brush pan came from you know originally um it's kind of like that upland uh, you know, really brush high grass, like something that's really durable, but has all the features that you, that you expect from a Kuyu pant. And, and they, they knocked that one out of the park. Yeah. I mean, it, there's so many applications for that pant, um, you know, from quail hunting, you know, any type of upland, you know, bird, bird hunting where you need to, you know, you're going through sagebrush, you're going through brush, um, you know, from say the thigh down and, you know, you need a little bit heavier duty, you know, to even, you know, desert sheep hunting to desert mule deer hunting. I mean, I, I, there's, I really like that. The other piece of gear that, um, has been out now for about a year is that axis thermal hybrid, um, hooded jacket. Um, yep. talk a little bit about that piece as far as I love how you have 
Um, for anybody out there listening, you, you need to go on kuyu.com to see it. But in essence, um, it's a hybrid of basically down insulation in the, the areas where you want to keep your core um, warm. But then you've got the, um, the other material that is breathable, if, if, if that makes sense. Talk about that piece as I feel like it's a real... Um, kind of a game changer piece. Yeah, I mean, the hybrid stuff is pretty cool in the fact that it's the right fabric in the right places. And, and we'll, we have a lot of hybrids coming where you, you can really just, you know, define where you need stuff. And that piece in particular is has been a huge hit. I mean, people love that thing. Um, and, and again, yeah, it's, it's insulated in the body and I'm trying to think. I don't have one right here. You, you kind of caught me off guard with the. I knew you were going to talk about the access thermal, but I, let me walk out and grab one. So I can let me make sure I got it in front of me. But yeah, it's it's been a that's been a huge hit. Um, and, and it's just you, you know all the hybrids are um, the best. Well, the the, the, the best beauty fabric, of it is you can you can maintain movement without you know if if you were to wear the Super Down Pro and hike up a ridge you're going to sweat your butt off because you don't have that variability in the, you know, under your arms on the sides um, where, you know, you're, you're going to need it to breathe where when you're wearing this product, what I like about it is I can hike with this jacket. I can still stay warm, but I don't get so hot that I sweat like crazy. And I think that's what makes this, for me, that makes this um, thermal hybrid so, I mean, it's such an awesome piece. Yeah, I mean, it's got a, it's, it's a th synthetic insulation called Fiberball in it. So it's, uh, it's not down. Um, it's, a, it's a replica down, which is really cool, this Fiberball stuff. But it's, uh, yeah, this is, and it's been a huge, I mean, it's, it, it's one of those jackets that has a lot of application in hunting. It also is, you know, which I guess counts quite a bit too. It's a super good looking jacket. People just love the jacket. I mean, it's just, it's gone really well. So, so it's um, been a huge yeah. seller. Yeah, yeah, it's been a great product. Great product. We make a vest as well, which has been big. So yeah, that's a that's a awesome. You know, obviously the access, the 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 waterproof, uh, the the membrane soft shell above, and then insulation in the middle where you need it has been. Uh, you know, to some of these hybrid hybridized high. Well, some of the hybrid designs yeah. are uh, are just you know it it just it allows you to to really really dive in on developing pieces that um everything's in the right spot it's the best way to put it that also brings up um the, the strong fleece um how you guys have basically come up with the different layering systems from you know the 190 strong fleece zip t um all the way up to the 290 um, and yep. as you go up in size or say 290 is going to be a more a uh, heavier weight, uh, thicker, warmer piece than say the 190. Um, yep. Talk about you know having those different pieces and how they've been received from the public of being able to kind of custom fit whatever hunt you know within a hunt you might be wearing a 190 uh, zip tee, but three days later the temperature changes and all of a sudden you're wearing you know, the 290 and it's on the same hunt. Like it's literally been within a week, week's time or five day period that you're wearing two different pieces of gear and how important that is for QU to be able to offer those different um, weight categories. Yeah. I mean, we have a lot of mid layers and the fact that like some, some mid layers you wear primary all the time, you know, like your, your, your lighter ones on the, I mean, they go up on, on, as the numerical scale and then all the way up to, you know, like your, your 290 or your 275 full zip will be kind of like your earlier season, not a jacket, but you're, you know, like in a time when you don't wear a jacket or as a super cold uh, mid layer. So it's, it's all just this, you know, I mean, the 240 is another one where it's, uh, you know, it's got a uh, act, it's got a, it's got a wind break in the center. So it's highly wind resistant, so we're more, we're more breathable, but we've always tried to add, add stuff in that has a, uh, has that that has a need um and and some are 
zip tee, some are full zip, depends on what you like, and that's why that's why there's so many of them. And, um, with the with the hoodies, um, what would you say? Do you sell more hoodies than than the zip tees? Uh, or would you say it's about no, I, half and half? I would probably say half and half, and I you know I think it just depends on personal preference. I prefer a full zip myself. I don't know as I get older, like. I'm not really into climbing in, into my shirt, but I, I, we sell a pile of zip tees too. And sometimes it's about saving a little bit of weight or making a, a piece more multi-use. Um, but yeah, that's why we always have that option, hooded, non-hooded, you know, et cetera. Makes sense. Um, anything you want to share with me on uh, letting the cat out of the bag on stuff? Kuyu's, um, I always bust your balls on this kind of question, but it seems like you always <laughs> dodge it and say you can't say anything. But are you guys working on some cool stuff? We are working on some cool stuff. <laughs> Is that all you're, you're going to tell me? I'll agree with you on that. Yeah, we, we always got some cool stuff in the works. And, um, yeah, I mean, we got, we got some really cool development stuff coming. Um, we're always working on, uh, and, and not just new development, on redevelopment, like um, – new fabrics and similar product you know like again we're not reinventing the wheel on every single thing it's like there's times where you can improve stuff so it's a lot of that stuff coming um yeah always always in the works those guys they got they got a lot of stuff we're working on pretty much every single day so awesome there's a, there's a lot of cool stuff coming up and a lot of, a lot of initiative coming down the pipe and they, uh it's uh it's not innovation never rests right that's right buddy i want to so, uh I want to finish here on Kuyu has done more for wild sheep than any company that's out there. Um, it, it's, it's just unbelievable how Kuyu has stepped up and you have actually been kind of at the forefront of being the conservation director um, for Kuyu. You know, you guys have contributed almost $400,000 towards real sheep conservation projects. Um, I know you moved what was it, 175 Rocky Mountain Bighorn and Desert Sheep uh, in yep. Montana, North Dakota, Utah, and Arizona. Um, yep. Talk a little bit about um, Conservation Direct and, you know, Kuyu's involvement with, not involvement, Kuyu's spearhead. Um, yeah, we like to drive, we, I mean, uh, Conservation Direct is is very similar to our business. Like we don't, we, uh, we, we like to spearhead our own projects in, in partnership with state agencies or, uh, or, or the local nonprofit. Um, and really it's very simple. Conservation direct is just like our business. Like we want to cut out the middleman and we want to get more done. We want to, we want to really put money and effort towards real projects that are going to get stuff done. And we've, we've, yeah, I mean, we're, we're, we'll be over $400,000 direct dollars from Kuyu. Um, that we've done um in the last uh, since march of 2020 um which i there's nobody else out there that's doing that kind of stuff i mean there's lots of there's the money the the donations and the the projects that we're doing that's where the money that's where the uh, rubber meets the road i mean we we want to do real projects that we can see the end result and like i, I said mean, didn't you guys like take over arizona's sheep budget in 2021 i mean you literally took, took, took the over whole again. thing yep. you just said yep. we will pay for the whole thing yep i had a meeting with them and they had four big projects in the works it was their whole um budget for 2021 and uh they were like we well, are you interested in any of these projects and i was like how about if we take them all yeah it was about 169 bucks um, we took the whole thing over and, uh, and, 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 and obviously it's not taken over. I mean, we, we partnered with them to offset. And the, the cool thing about, you know, particularly in that Arizona project is, um, it has a lot of impact in other things as well. I mean, like sheep's the passion. I mean, we, we do the sheep stuff because that's my passion. I mean, I, I, when I came up with the conservation direct, I was just like, man, there's just gotta be a better way to be involved in these projects than letting other people do them. And, and, and. And, and, and so what it is, is, you know, we, we took over that project and, and, and partnered with Arizona Game of Fish and Arizona Desert Bighorn Sheep Society and, and, and took that over. But what that, what it does, what people don't really understand is that that's $164,000 that went to a lot of other things. I mean, there's not a, you know, there's not a, uh, a North American foundation for Mern's quail out there, you know, <laughs> like it, it frees up uh, a lot of money to do projects that aren't sexy like sheep. And, you know, another thing that people don't realize is when you when you take a direct donation from a company like, say, for Kuyu, um, the state agency can take that 
because it's not a we're we're not a five hundred one c three we're not a um, we're not taking donations um, and uh, like they they can take that with Pittman Robertson money and double triple and quadruple that money for their budget you know so one hundred sixty four thousand dollars turns into a lot more money when it's a, a direct donation from a company directly to them so that's um, you know people look look more into that as far as you know it, it's just maximizing your conservation dollars. Um, on projects where you can see a tangible outcome, you know, for us, it's we want to tell the story. We want to we want to be out there with those biologists, and we want to um, you know help in those transplants. That's that's, that's we're not doing it for um, you know to get a pat on the back. We're doing it because we you know I mean that's that's how you're going to have more sheep hunts down the road, and that's how we're going to have more sheep on the landscape. Is, is really you know seeing these projects come to fruition. And it's been it, it's by far my favorite thing to do now. Um, I'm, I'm so proud of, um, you know, the fact that the company has backed all these and, and this, just the amount of buy-in as far as doing these projects. Cause it was, it was frustrating for a long time to not be included. It's very clicky and nichey and, you know, you gotta do this and you gotta buy this advertising and this is, sorry, you can't do that. This is our other partner. And we just got rid of all that BS and we're just like, let's do our own projects. We'll just, we'll just go straight to the source and pay for the whole project. And, and let the people, you know, biologists are not great at raising money. That's not what their job is. So when you can step in and offset those costs and get them to where, hey, what would you do if money wasn't a problem? And they're like, oh, we do this. Well, let's do that. So it's it's been extremely gratifying. And, you know, things are going well at you. I mean, that's, it's, I don't think anybody can look around and not run into a, a, a jacket in the airport or somebody wearing it. So things are going really well. And I think our, our customer, I've always thought our customer expects us to do really good things with the, with, with the, uh, with the success that we've had. And, and it's just been, it's just a win, win, win all the way around. It's just been a phenomenal, uh, initiative. That's not even slowing down. We have another huge project. Uh, I can't exactly say where, but in the next two months, we're going to move 40 more sheep, um, in a big project. We're taking care of that whole thing. Um, it's going to be a, a phenomenal reintroduction to a herd that had disappeared and, uh, partnered with a, an agency and a, and a local five and a local uh, chapter to, to do it. And um, we'll, we'll have some more information about that shortly, but we got another great big project coming up. That's just really cool. going to add another state that we've moved sheep in, which is ultimately we want to move sheep in every state everywhere. And, and, and uh, yeah, that's been, it's, it's a pretty awesome, pretty awesome thing to be a part of. That's fantastic. You can hear when you're talking about it, you can hear the passion in your voice for it. And it's, it's fantastic that you've, um, been able to, you know, find those projects and find the places where there's a need and be able to put that money directly on the ground. So congratulations. Yeah, so it's always been it. something that you that you hear about or you, that, 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 like people, you know, you, you hear about it or you you hear people talking about it. It's always seemed like one of those things like, oh, how do you, how do you really know how to do that stuff? And how do you get a part of that? Or how do I, like, that's the really where people are like, man, I, I'd love to be a part of something like that where I can see where my money's working or my effort's going to. And um, it's really not that hard. I mean, we've, we've, we've really, really attacked it and, uh, and, and really tried to make a difference. And, and you know, I, I hope people see that. I know they do. And I hope they under, understand um, what, we're, what we're doing because it's, it's, it's very impactful and it's, it's making a difference. That's fantastic. Well, Brendan, it's been an awesome hour getting to share here uh, with you and, and hear how things are going and hear how things are at Kuyu. And it's always great talking to you. Um, want to give you a chance, uh, any final thoughts you've got there. And um, just want to thank you again for coming on today. Um, and I know the listeners will be excited to hear this episode. Awesome, man. No, no, appreciate it. And, uh, yeah, like I said, we have, we'll, uh, we'll have some more information on that next project coming up and, uh, yeah, Kuyu.com. That's, that's where you can see it all. So that's right. Um, guys, uh, Kuyu ultralight hunting, uh, all the gear that I've been using since 2010. Um, like Brendan said, go to Kuyu.com. It's a direct to consumer, uh, brand. You can go on the website, order everything right there. If you're in that Dallas area, make sure to check out the new retail location there in Dallas. And then Brendan also um, said the upcoming shows that uh, the guys are going to be at. And uh, make sure if you uh, see Brendan at those shows to go up and say hello and shake his hand yeah. and introduce yourself to him. 
Um, Brendan, as always, it's awesome having you on the podcast. Um, I'm excited to see um, Lucas, uh, your son, as he flourishes over the next uh, handful of years and, and really, you know, chases his passion. Um, and it's uh, just great catching up with you. And uh, thanks a lot for coming on. Yeah, thanks, Jay. Thanks for having me on. And we'll, uh, we'll talk to you soon. Okay, buddy. Take care. God bless. Yep. Bye.